Good morning, my dear students. The topic for today's discussion is going to be seed germination. What is a seed germination? The seed, when you provide it with a all necessary favorable conditions, it starts germinating, and then it is giving rise to a young new baby plant which may turn out to be a, which may remain as a small plant throughout its lifetime or it may become a very big gigantic tree it all depends on its fate so it is only we, we, from the seed the whole tree is developing however big it is tree is like a ficus bengalensis ficus religiosa alamaram arasamaram so gigantic they are but even that it is uh, having the seeds which are very smaller in size it is in that seed the baby plant was living for a quite long time and then it is becoming a tree so seed germination is the uh, development of a seed into a baby plant is uh, called as a seed germination okay now before proceeding to the seed germination proper let me give you some idea about the structure of the seed <clears throat> so that you will understand it in a better way but before that how a seed is produced a seed is coming only from a ovule and that ovule is, big, is present inside the ovary ovary after the fertilization is becoming a fruit and the ovule is becoming a seed so after the fertilization it is a ovary which is becoming the fruit and it is a ovule which is becoming the seed so if you want to study the seed germination in a detailed way you must know about the structure of the seed if you want to study about the structure of the seed you must know the structure of the ovule so let us scratch from the beginning <coughs> this is a funiculus outer integument inner integument what you are seeing in that is called as a nucellus and in the nucellus you have got an embryo sac containing three antipodals through the chalazal end and a secondary or a polar nucleus then you have got an egg with the two synergids all the three put together form what is called as an egg apart so the two integuments are not completely totally fused and it is not a sealed compartment it's not at all a sealed compartment it has got a hole through which water enters through the during the seed germination this is a called as a microphile <coughs> microphile <coughs> sorry it is a <coughs> now you have got the chalazal end there out integument inner integument and then you have got the nucellus now after the fertilization <coughs> the nucellus normally disintegrates normally it disintegrates but in some cases the nucellus may remain to become what is called as a perispore now these antipodals it completely it gets disintegrated all of them they go away now the secondary nucleus after meeting with the male it becomes the pen primary endosperm nucleus becomes a cellular after some time called primary endosperm cell and then that is the one which is giving rise to the endosperm endosperm so it is giving rise to endosperm okay now this uh, another male nucleus is fusing with the egg it becomes the zygote it becomes the zygote 
the zygote is responsible to become the embryo embryo okay so the outer integument is becoming the testa and the inner integment is becoming the tegmen outer seed coat inner seed coat so the outer integument is becoming the outer seed coat inner integument is becoming the inner seed coat nucellus normally disintegrates antipodal go be then the secondary nucleus become the endosperm and then the egg becomes the zygote finally becomes the embryo the two anti uh, synergies also they get it disintegrated the hilum the funicle all of them they remain in the seed also so these are all the changes are taking place in the ovule to become the seed so when a seed when it is uh, when you take a seed and then when you take a bean seed and then open it out when you just open it out you will be able to see the embryo you will be able to see the embryo here so this embryo which will be surrounded by the endosperm surrounded by the endosperm if it is a endosperm as a seed okay this embryo will be containing three regions namely plumule then radical sorry you don't have a space here we will leave it like that then hypocotyl hypocotyl plumule radical and hypocotyl <coughs> so these are the three regions of a embryo okay now it is a this embryo which will be developing into a seed sorry a, a young plant if it is a provided all the necessary favorable conditions now what are the different conditions required for the seed germination how it is uh, taking place we will be seeing this in a detailed way in this uh, lecture so dormant embryo becomes active and forms a seedling or a young plant capable of independent existence so that's very important so when a seed is becoming a baby plant it has got an independent existence most seeds germinate when provided with water oxygen and dormancy is broken so this is very important the dormancy should be broken <coughs> it will be in the dormant period for a for a not for quite long term a period which is a variable the dormancy period is a variable the dormancy period could be very short or it could be very very long also it all depends on the plant but anyhow a plant has to undergo a dormancy period or a period of rest the moment it where it is removed from a fruit or the moment when the seed is coming out of the fruit and then falling on the ground it will not germinate it is not ready for germination it has to still mature it should get dried then only it is ready for the germination okay so this period is called a dormancy and the dormancy is a very interesting topic in plant physiology if the plants are having a very long dormancy period and then if you want to germinate that particular seed very fast for the commercial purposes you can break the dormancy there are many hormones available for that and even in our traditional method many uh, I mean methods have been followed by our agriculturalist to break the dormancy you can make a plant to germ make a seed to germinate very fast if it is having a longer dormancy period by breaking the dormancy how to break a dormancy it is a very interesting topic in botany but just uh, i will not go into that uh, details because it is a topic on dormancy but understand that dormancy should be broken if a seed has to germinate so four steps are involved in the plant uh, seed germination one is called imbibition 
respiration. Third one, mobilization of the reserve food is very important. Then last one stage is the growth of the embryo. So these are the four steps involved in the germination. What about the imbibition? <coughs> now this word imbibition, imbibing, you, it's an English word, it's not a Latin term I think. Imbibing, you are imbibing, when you take a glass of water and then just uh, drink it as such, it's called imbibing. He is imbibing, he is imbibing a lot. Just taking the thing as uh, as a full form called uh, imbibing. Okay, so when you take the seed and then put it in water, they imbibe. Now there will be micro pile. There will be a micro pile. There will be a small hole in the seed. Through that, it is not through the seed coat. It is a, through that a hole micro pile. The water is entering, and then the seed will start a swelling, swelling, and then finally. It will be reaching the maximum size. When it is becoming, when it is a swelling in size, the seed coat will tear off. The test tegmen will tear off, and then the germination starts. Okay. Now this uh, imbibition, uh, how this imbibition will force that a seed is uh, developing by means of imbibition is a uh, very interesting. It uh, it is uh, developing a lot of force called imbibition force or imbibitional pressure. When you just take a very I mean a dried seed, put it in water. Next morning, you can see that they have become so large in size. See, for cooking the groundnut or a peanut, or for for that example, any dried seed you want to make a, a, a prepare it for eating purpose. Now, if you just soak it in water, you will see next morning it is swelling abnormally in size. Okay. So it will become, see, this much a seed has become so large in size. It is because of the imbibition. They take water and then they imbibe. Now this imbibitional pressure is so great that once upon a time, see, if you just take a bottle, <coughs> if you just take a bottle, pour, I mean, put a good amount of seeds inside that. And pour sufficient water, sufficient water, pour sufficient water. Okay. Now, when the seeds are swelling in size, the imbibitional pressure created by the seeds is so great that if it is tightly capped, tightly fitted, then the bottle will break, however strong the bottle may be. So, why I am telling this, the imbibitional pressure developed by the seeds are so great. In the olden days, you see what happens. Uh, this is uh, being used by even cracking the what is called as a mountains. If you uh, see a mountain is there, you want to crack it. You can make it with the help of a gunpowder. But uh, initially, what they will do, they will put, uh, they will drill a small hole, and then seeds are put inside that. Then it is uh, tightly packed. Now, what happens when the seeds are swelling in size? Then even it will the the rock will develop cracks. It will develop cracks. Once it is developing cracks, then it becomes easy for the people to completely break it. You could have seen when the plant is growing in some of the uh, I mean uh, temple tops and the wall of the houses and all. It will be able to crack the wall. So the imbibitional pressure developed by the plant the seeds. This is so great that it is able to crack even many buildings. Okay, so that much is the pressure created by the imbibition. <coughs> so, as I told you, the first step is imbibition. It the uptake of water by the dehydrated seed is called as imbibition. Seeds, when placed in moist soil, absorb water through the micropile. It causes a seed to swell as a cell constituents are hydrated. <coughs> With a great force, imbibition ruptures a seed coat and enables a radical and emerge. Development of a great force, imbibition pressure, this is called. Dry seeds in water can break the bottle as they imbibe water and swell. So that's about the imbibition, the first step in the 
seed germination second one is respiration so respiration is a second step and during this respiration it takes in oxygen and then it gives out carbon dioxide so without oxygen seeds cannot form but in the case of some plants it is even anaerobic anaerobic area respiration also you are getting so respiration imbibition makes embryo cells active and causes a resumption of a metabolic activities respiration is initially anaerobic but simply simple polysaccharides function as a respiratory substrate when anaerobic respiration reaches the peak mitochondria differentiate in embryo cells respiration now becomes aerobic consuming oxygen which enters the seeds okay. so first to start with it is anaerobic because uh, you won't be inside the seed you, the cells mitochondria number of mitochondria will not be that much then slowly it starts with an anaerobic and then switches over to the aerobic respiration and then it is uh, taking in the oxygen and then the seed germination is uh, now slowly taking a gallop or it is it is a uh, moving towards the uh, positive side <clears throat> the third one is a mobilization of reserve food this is a very very important step see inside the seed you will be getting the food this food has to be mobilized to the other parts if the food is not made into a, what is a portable form or a, uh, the form in which the seeds can consume it then it cannot uh, the embryo plant cannot grow so if the embryonic plant or a baby plant if it has to grow it has to get the food from the endosperm <coughs> so how this is uh, taking place it is uh, due to the mobilization of the food from to the developing embryo so mobilization of the reserve food uh, reserve resource uh, starch or protein may be stored chiefly in the endosperm so they are the examples of the endosperm seeds <coughs> examples are castor Resinus communis, paddy, Pariza sativa, and many cereals, okay, grains, and other monocots. Or in cotyledons, so the food may be stored in the endosperm, or it may be stored in the cotyledon. So there are two areas in which the food can be stored. So the best example for um, the cotyledons storing the food material is leguminous plants or pulses. So here in pulses, the food is stored in the cotyledon. It's not in the endosperm because uh, it will be the endosperm will be utilized by the embryo while it is uh, developing. Okay. So the reserve food material it could be in the form of an uh, it is in the form of endosperm. And stored in the endosperm or in the cotyledon. <coughs> okay, examples for both I have given there. Activated embryo cells induce a production of a hormone G3 <coughs> and a digestion of a reserve food material. Then cells which are rich in protein, starch, or oil secrete hydrolyzing enzymes. So hydrolyzing enzymes are very important for the transport of the food material these are all very important steps in the germination of the seed step number one is the production of a hormone it is being introduced and then it will be produced secreting the hydrolyzing enzymes they digest the reserve food which are changed into the sugar amino acids and other soluble substances they are translocated to embryo cells so the production of hormones and the production of or the secretion of the hydrolyzing enzymes both are responsible for the formation of the sugar and amino acids which are responsible for the transport okay now this is the structure of a seed see this is the seed coat 
seed coat is offer to uh, sometimes sometimes uh, you got uh, seeds also unitigmic seeds you got some seeds will have only one coat in the ovule itself outer integument and inner integument ategmic ovules are also there ategmic ovules are also there so unitegmic ovules and bitegmic ovules so bitegmic ovules are the most common type of ovules okay and they give rise to the two coats for the seed outer coat and then the inner coat so the seed coat it will be of outer coat and the inner coat the common character the other one may one may be absent these are all exceptions then you have got the cotyledons these are two cotyledons <coughs> It will be having the uh, plumule, radical, and hilum. See, radical will be there. This is the radical. This is the radical, and this is the plumule. This is a baby plant. So this is the baby plant. The baby plant is uh, containing the is put inside the endosperm. This is the surrounding nutritive tissue. And by utilizing this tissue, this baby plant is growing. Now I think you are able to understand that very clearly. This is the baby plant with radical and plumule. This is the hilum portion where the seed is attached to the fruit. Okay, and then the micropyle will be somewhere here. The micropyle will be somewhere here, and then it will be absorbing the water. Will enter the seed only through this. Then it is swell. Then this is the baby plant. The baby plant will be having the radical, then plumule. Then the interjunction is called as a hypocotyl region. Hypocotyl region. This region is called as hypocotyl. That has not been labeled here. That which is a little below the cotyl, little below the cotyledon, is called as a hypocotyl. Okay. So this is a radical, hypocotyl, plumule. While the seed is germinating. It is the plumule which is going to become the shoot system, and it is the radical which is going to become the shoot uh, root system, and the hypocotyl will remain as a junction between the root and the shoot. So this is the uh, our seed coats. This is the endosperm which will be utilized by the plant by the embryo to become a baby plant. The same thing in a sectional view. So different views have been shown to you in a clear way to understand the structure of the seed in a more detailed way. Now you see how the seed is slowly germinating. It is the <coughs> this uh, I was uh, telling you the hypocotyl region. Hypocotyl region is the junction between the plumule and then the radical. This is the plumule. This is the plumule which is uh, having uh, two. Uh, I mean the spreading out the cotyledons, and here you will be getting the radical. Radical will be developing the roots. This is a primary root, and these are the lateral roots. Lateral roots. <coughs> if it is a monocot, you won't be getting a primary root and a lateral root in the form of a secondary root, a tertiary root, a quaternary root, etc. But the, even there will be getting a primary root, but the primary root is a very short-lived. Immediately it dies. The primary root immediately dies, and then you get a cluster of roots coming from this portion. Hundreds and thousands of roots will be coming out of this, and then that leads to what is called as a fibrous root system. But in dicot, it is a tap root system with the lateral roots differentiating itself into the secondary root, tertiary root, etc., etc. Okay. So this structure shows very clearly about the different structure of the um, seed, the germinating seed. Now you see, this is a castor seed, and in the castor seed alone, a special structure you would have seen. This portion is called as a caruncle. Caruncle, a beautiful name. I think it is somebody's uncle. It is a somebody's uncle, so you call him as a caruncle. <coughs> Fine. So. In which which plant you are able to come across a caruncle? Sometimes they will be asking. So the best example is a resinous communis or castor seed. Okay. So this caruncle is a special structure only for the castor seed, and that you don't get in other plants. Okay. So that's about this uh, focusing is on the germination of the seed. 
growth of the embryo cells of the embryonal axis use the soluble food and they divide and enlarge radical and embryo axis is the first to enlarge and elongate which grows out of a seed coat and grows downwardly into soil to establish as a primary root now you may ask sir why it is the root which is coming out first and not the shoot see only if the root is developing first and it is able to anchor itself to the substratum to the soil then the shoot can come okay then the root will go it will absorb the water and then it will transport it to the plumule then the plumule will come out then it will open out open out so it is the root which has to come out first if only the root is coming out then it will be able to absorb the water and send it to the other parts of the plant so it is the root embryonal it is the radical it is the radical which comes out first the radical end of the embryonal axis comes out first and it comes out and it grows uh, downwardly to establish a primary root in the case of a dicotyledonous plant and even in monocot i told you it is only a primary root but the primary root is a short lived in the case of a monocot okay plumule comes out of the seed next plumule comes out next okay this is second root radical comes out first plumule comes out of the seed and soil and grows as a shoot with the primary leaves factors for a germination divided into external factor and internal factor each having four more factors subdivided what are the external factors required for seed germination they are the water oxygen temperature and then the light see sometimes they would have given in your question which one of the following is not needed for the seed germination and then they would have, i mean added soil as a factor see soil is not needed for the seed germination even if you are going to keep this soil seed out providing all these conditions then the seed will germinate if you just to take a cloth and then put some seeds then pour a sufficient amount of water supply then just uh, uh, hang it somewhere else the roots all will come out next morning if you see lot of roots would have come out of the seeds so for the seed germination you don't need a soil you don't need a soil see but of course for anchoring and for further stabilized growth you need it but it's not an essential thing the pure a seed can be completely totally grown in the water itself for the hydroponics is another different area in botany hydroponics the development of the uh, young plants in the nutrient medium itself directly what is a hydroponics the so soil is not necessary for the seed growth but these are essential i was telling you in the steps for the seed germination first step is imbibition of water that water should enter through the micropyle it should be able to swell the seed the seed coat should break open and then only the embryonic plant may able to come out so water is essential if you don't provide water to the seed then it will never germinate the seed cannot germinate if it is not supplied with water so the first thing required for the seed germination is only the water the second one is respiration just now we saw in another slide to start with it is an anaerobic respiration and then slowly it uh, turns out to be a uh, um, aerobic respiration now temperature is very much essential all the most needed for the uh, seed growth or the um, development of seed germination see if you just uh, take uh, the seeds then put it in water and then keep it in the fridge See, inside a fridge you are getting oxygen inside you are you have already put the seeds in the beaker but if you put it in the fridge it will not germinate why it's not germinating you have supplied it with water you have supplied it with oxygen even light is there but it will not germinate because for the mobilization for the mobilization of the nutrient from one area to another area 
hormones are essential just now we saw hormones are essential these hormones are highly what is known as uh, they are very sensitive to the temperature very narrow um, temperature range will be there by which they will become active so if the temperature is not conducive the hormones will not be secreted amino acids will not be secreted so if when they are not secreted the nutrient food material will not be able to be transported then the young plant cannot grow so only when the temperature is favorable the seed germination takes place finally light is also very essential and it doesn't take place in the darkness so four important uh, things that are required for a uh, seed germination is a uh, water oxygen temperature and light okay fine so i will just uh, uh, read through this first water seeds are highly dehydrated with uh, 6 to 15 percentage of water low physiological activity it provides sufficient hydration to concentrated protoplasm and cause hydrolysis of reserve food into soluble substances for transport and embryo cells to grow in size. Oxygen is necessary. First seeds respire anaerobically and later aerobically to release energy and metabolic activities. The exception is rice and a plant called typha. Temperature, as I was telling you, is very important for the germination. Seeds require a range of a temperature between 5 degrees to 40 degrees. So, high variability is there. Some seed germination can take place as low as 5 degrees Celsius and it may go up to 40 degrees Celsius. Optimum temperature is 25 to 30. So, the minimum and the maximum range is this below this and above this seed germination cannot take place but the optimum temperature for the germination of the seed is 25 to 30 that's the normal temperature that we are getting in in the places like uh, india in the tropical and uh, subtropical countries you get this in our climatic condition then light is very essential not essential for most seeds but essential for some species which are light sensitive and germination is influenced by the presence and the absence of light. <coughs> then what are the internal factors which are responsible for the seed germination? They are the maturation of the embryo. That is, uh, the, uh, the, the seed should undergo a period of rest. That is very important. After ripening, viability and dormancy. So these are all the important points or important uh, um, factors responsible for the seed germination and these uh, factors are within the plant or within the seed so you call it as an internal factors maturity of the embryo is the first point seeds of uh, some plants are immature while shed they germinate when embryo matures then after ripening Freshly shed seeds of uh, some plants may not germinate because of absence of hormones. Viability. Seeds germinate only within period of viability. See, there is a long period of viability. <coughs> Certain PS seeds, uh, they, uh, they remain viable for a very short duration. Uh, some are viable for a very, very longer duration. Seed, seeds remain, sorry, grammatical mistake. Seeds remain viable for different periods of time. From a few days, axolis, to more than 100 years, trifolium. Maximum viability in lotus seed, 100 years, you see. From few days, from few days to 100 years, this is a range viability period okay dormancy what is the dormancy sleeping period rest period required for the grow for the germination of the seed due to various reasons impermeability toughness of a seed coats presence of a growth hormones 
they germinate only after breaking of the dormancy natural or artificial this is what i was telling you when the dormancy period is a very long then the people then the agriculturalists and the scientists they want to break the dormancy by different methods by means of the chemicals treatment of the or there so when you break the dormancy then you can make the plant to grow or to germinate faster some if it seeds they need a very very long dormant period say to, to one year or two years sometimes particularly gymnosperms but if you want to produce a plant immediately from that what can you do then you have to break the dormancy this breaking of a dormancy plays a very important role in the phase of agriculture horticulture and also in some of the seed production technology when they are following in those occasions two types of germinations are there <clears throat> one is epigeal type another one is a hypogeal okay hypogeal sorry hypocotyl hypogeal it will be in the next slide next one <clears throat> so epigeal epigeal means epi means outer gia means soil gia means soil epi means outer now the germination is uh, taking place above the soil so cotyledons above the ground means epigeal epi out ja means ground <coughs> due to rapid elongation of a hypocotyl seen in many dicotyledonous seeds so epigeal germination you get in the beans okay castor and then in the sunflower goats belong to the family cucurbitaceae you got a different type of goats the better god snake god bath sponge those also is a very big very big family cucurbitaceae is also called as a goat family so this a cucumber is a one such a, uh, it is a coming in the goat family only this is a go goats sunflower castor beans they are all the best examples for epigeal germination <clears throat> here what happens hypocotyl grows rapidly and comes out of soil with a curved structure later hypocotyl stratens loosened seed coat falls down and cotyledons become green become green <coughs> and the plumule gives rise to the first green leaves primary leaves cotyledons are deprived of a food and uh, fall down ultimately okay so it is like this uh, first uh, this is the radical this is the hypocotyl portion this will be the plumule now this portion elongates it elongates very fast when it is elongating this will the plumule will straighten and then it will be coming above the ground level then it is that is why it is called as an epigeal germination <coughs> perhaps in some of the slides i will be able to show that very clearly to you so this is the <coughs> radical this is the seed first the this is the seed first the radical comes out this portion is called as a hypocotyl region this is the cotyl the hypocotyl below the cotyl is called a hypocotyl this hypocotyl remains curved then it grows very fast in this region there is a fast growth is there because of the fast growth the cotyl comes out so it comes out like this and then this you see this is the radical portion this uh, hypocotyl region it elongates so long as a result of that the cotyls they come out and then it becomes a, a new plant okay. in the hypogeal this epigeal germination in hypogeal germination what happens this epicotyl is uh, playing a role this is the cotyl portion this is the hypocotyl portion this is the epicotyl but here epicotyl plays a role but here the hypocotyl so that makes the difference this is the hypocotyl this portion this, this hypocotyl shown here very clearly and this is the hypocotyl in this diagram epicotyl <coughs> brings about the germination so the plumule comes out and the root yes. so this is the hypogeal germination this is the epigeal germination a beautiful diagram to differentiate between a epigeal germination and a hypogeal germination <coughs> then hypogeal type 
in the first one we studied about the epigel type cotyledon is below soil so hypo means below geo means ground cotyledon is below soil due to rapid elongation of epicotyl here it is epicotyl there it is hypocotyl many dicots and monocots it epicotyl elongates and becomes a curved beginning or a bringing plumule above the soil in maize these are the examples in maize there are in the monocotyledonous seeds uh, two portions uh, two two structures are coleoptile and coleorhiza will be there and they, which are missing which will not be there in a dicotyledonous seeds so coleoptile is a plumule grows stays in the soil and comes out to form the green tube plumule ruptures the coleoptile coleorhiza along with the radical inside grows downwards in the soil so these are this plumule and radical is will be a little bit different in a dicot and then monocot monocot plumule and dicot plumule monocot radical and dicot they will be different that's why different names have been given plumule is called as a coleoptile and a radical is called as a coleorhiza because they are covered structures and then they will tear open and then they will come out inside grows a downwards into the soil radical ruptures coleorhiza and grows up further this radical forms a primary root which is replaced by fibrous adventitious root i was just now telling you in a dicot root you got a um, top root system and in a monocot you got a fibrous root system see this is how the hypogel germination is taking place in a monocotyledonous plant the best example shown here is uh, the maize plant <coughs> you see in a maize plant uh, this is a maize seed it, uh, this is a coleoptile the upper portion the plumule and then this is the coleorhiza coleorhiza the coleorhiza tears open and then it is uh, becoming the radical the coleoptile is uh, becoming the plumule coleoptile is becoming the shoot shoot portion shoot portion okay so it is uh, this portion which is uh, becoming the uh, shoot first foliage leaves and uh, this portion is becoming the root so this uh, this diagram shows you the uh, germination of the seed the monocotyledonous seed and in the monocotyledonous seed it is a hypogel germination once again a beautiful uh, comparative diagram of a uh, epigel hypogel germination and epigel germination see in a hypogel germination hypogel germination see hypogel germination once again dicot and monocot this uh, hypogel uh, epigel germination this portion grows out and then this uh, this region it grows fast and then brings out this cotyl uh, out the cotyl comes out that is why it's called epigeal it is coming out of the soil but it remains below the soil here hypogeal it remains the soil hypogeal okay it comes out epigeal okay so this is the epigeal germination of a dicot and then the monocot here the similarly hypogeal germination a dicot and then the monocot okay in monocot you'll be getting the coleoptile as i was telling you and in a dicot you will be getting the plumule vivipari a very interesting area in biology you get this a vivipari in both plants as well as in animals the development of a seed while it is still within the fruit is called as a vivipari in nature vivipari you are able to see in many plants when you are uh, when you cut open the mango for eating sometimes you could have seen the mango seeds are germinating and then producing the small shoot would have come there this is a very common uh, observation and then uh, uh, this atocorpus integri folia what we call as a jackfruit in tamil we call it as a pala pala salai pala palam within that you will be getting the pala salai and then within that you will be getting the pala kottai the seed now when this is uh, auto, the botanical name is atocorpus integrifolia when this atocorpus integrifolia pala chala pala kottai when it is still within the fruit fruitleted actually it is only a fruitlet while it is still there it will be able to germinate is a very common observation 
most of the seeds will would have got germinated even when they are within the fruitlets so the germination of the seed when within when they are within the fruit is called as vivipari <coughs> when the young ones are uh, there when the um, the best example is a ganguru we call viviparous type of viviparous type of uh, um, embryo development viviparous type there also you get so the development of embryo when it is uh, still attached to the mother we were all viviparous uh, animals we were all viviparous animals birds mostly it is all oviparous animals they don't develop uh, while they are attached to the mother but uh, our development is uh, taking place uh, when we were remaining attached to our mother so special type of germination germination occurs while the seed is still attached to parent plant and nourished by it it occurs in mangrove plants which are trees growing in salty marshes of the seed coast rhizophora pinaceae avicennia best examples for that these seeds cannot grow in marshy habitat due to higher concentration of salt and lack of oxygen embryo continues to grow while seed is attached to the parent plant now the vivipari in the case of uh, these plants rise up around the avicennia it's a very interesting now see this is a water source it could be a river lake or whatever it could be a flowing water and then you have got the sea so this is going to join the sea after some time and the water current is flowing let's imagine in this direction it's going to join the sea and this is the delta portion okay. so you call this as a delta portion because it is in the same you call the latter delta because this area is called a delta where the river is going and joining the sea that's by the way okay fine now what happens so when these rice of arabian plants like this when they are growing on the bank most of the time it will be leaning towards the side of the water so the this is the plant okay this is the plant it it is a very big tree in fact a very big tree so the root system will be here on the bank of the river and it will be leaning towards the side now when the seed is a falling what happens it will uh, if, if it is like a normal plant this seed will be carried away by the water current and then immediately it will be going and joining in the sea there it cannot germinate because of the differentiation in the concentration these these seeds cannot germinate here but there will be a heavy water current will be there always the water will be always flowing in this direction so nature has adopted a method what happens the seed will germinate even while it is in the mother plant so it will grow into even i have seen a half a meter 1 meter the plant growing growing so even few leaves some about a ton or 15 leaves will be produced and then it will be producing a, an young plant in fact an young plant will be produced while it is still attached to the mother plant and then it will fall because of the heavy gravity it will immediately sink to the bottom and then it will anchor itself to the substratum so there is a least possibility of uh, this plant being carried to the into the sea and uh, it helps in the prevent it helps in preventing the wastage if it is uh, just shed as the seed then there is a possibility for all the seeds to be carried by into the sea and there is a heavy casualty for the plant so these uh, plants have developed a very beautiful technique of uh, what is called vivipari where the young plants are produced even when they are attached to the mother plant and then they fall as a young plant to the uh, to the ground since they they don't uh, fall on the ground they grow in the water they sink to the bottom of the water and then they get attached there so a beautiful adaptation seen in the plants which are growing in a marshy area so see the beautiful uh, this is the way how it is growing this is a hypocotyl region while it is a falling from a falling from the mother plant it is a mostly half a meter sometimes 25 cm 30 cm even half a meter size they grow and then they fall directly into the water radically elongates and becomes a swollen and projects out of the fruit due to increasing weight dot like seedlings breaks off 
from the parent plant and gets embedded in marshy soil in such a way that the plumule is above salt water. Radical forms the root and establishes a new plant. So, this is, these are all some special adaptations are seen in the plants which are growing in a marshy area. Okay. To sum up what I have taught you in today's class, I was discussing about the seed germination. I described about the structure of the seed. Yeah, seed contains a chest, or teg, I mean, and then inside that you've got a tegmen, inner seed coat, surrounded by the endosperm. Inside the endosperm, you've got the cotyledons, a single cotyledon or a two cotyledons, depending on whether it's a dicotyledonous plant or a monocotyledonous plant. And within that, you get an embryo embedded in that. That embryo is the baby plant. That embryo is a containing the plumule, radical and hypocotyl in the junction between that. And then we switch it over to the factors leading to the germination. We divide them into external factors and then the internal factors. Factors responsible for the germination. Then we discuss about two types of germination, namely the epigel germination and hypogel germination. When the germination is taking place above the soil, you call it as an epigel germination. And when it is taking place within the sea, within, sorry, within the ground level, then it is called a hypogel germination. Then we studied something about a viviparia also. That completes our full discussion about the seed germination. Okay, thank you very much. And the rest of the things we will study in next few classes. Thank you very much.